If you're a civilian and want to use Krav Maga, McMap, SCARS, or any other kind of military training program, then I have bad news for you. Military martial arts don't work for self-defense. People often think, oh, the military uses it, so it must be like super effective. No, not at all. In fact, the opposite is usually true. For civilian usage, military combativeness programs often pale in comparison to other martial arts because they're used for an entirely different purpose. Soldiers don't learn self-defense, they learn warfare. I'm going to explain why military martial arts don't teach self-defense, what they are useful for, and why those uses don't apply to civilians. Also, be aware that I'll be using the term combatives as a catch-all term for military martial arts programs, because I don't want to say military martial arts every time. The first and most obvious problem with military combatives is that soldiers don't get enough training to actually be good hand-to-hand -hand fighters. In civilian martial arts, you generally get a base level of competency within six months to a year, and becoming a genuinely good fighter often takes several years. Depending on your specialty, U.S. Army basic training is 10 weeks long. Trying to make someone a good fighter in 10 weeks is a hopeless endeavor. When you're training a million people to do something in four weeks of training before they go to combat, you can't give them skill in anything, right? Especially when they need that time to also learn fitness, land navigation, shooting, tactics, battlefield medicine, and everything else a soldier needs to know. Trainees also receive an introduction into chemical, radioactive, biological, and nuclear CBRN readiness. There's going to be very little time left for combatives training, especially when you account for the fact that combatives is pretty low down on the list of priorities. And this leads me to my next point, which is that hand-to-hand -hand combat skills are not a priority to soldiers because they're only useful in specific situations. Soldiers have rifles, sidearms, knives, battle buddies, and radios that can call in artillery and air support. Punching the bad guy is not usually their plan A. Okay, so we're always armed. The bad guys are usually armed. If a soldier finds himself in a life or death fist fight with an enemy combatant, something has gone terribly wrong. Now, military martial arts training does have important uses on the battlefield, namely instilling a warrior ethos and non-lethally restraining civilians. Let's look at some examples of scenarios in which soldiers would need to know martial arts. The first possibility is a weapon malfunction in close quarters battle. Sometimes a soldier will kick in a door, see a bad guy, aim his rifle, pull the trigger and hear click. This means that the weapon has jammed and it's time for plan B. At that range, there's no space to run or hide and there's not enough time to wait for the guy behind you to shoot the bad guy instead. Your survival depends on whether you can rush the enemy before they can get their weapon on target. If you can do that well, you often don't even have to actually win the fight. You just have to buy yourself the precious few seconds it will take for the rest of your squad to pour into the room and help you out. This requires very little in the way of skill and instead necessitates an aggression and willingness to engage with the enemy, often called a warrior ethos. The fighting characteristic of a warrior is the willingness to close with the enemy, and that, that's really true. The instinct to engage and run towards violence is helpful not just in hand-to-hand, -hand, but in all aspects of military combat. That's why instilling a warrior ethos is one of the main objectives of military combatives. Best form of defense here is attack. Is that understood? Because this is about controlling the culture of your unit. The second scenario in which a soldier would have to use hand-to-hand -hand is when they have to arrest someone. When someone's being uncooperative at a checkpoint, shooting them isn't always the best idea. Killing unarmed civilians for being stubborn is a good way to get everyone in that country to hate America. What if these people don't do what you say? Are you gonna shoot them? Not necessarily the best answer. This means that soldiers have to be able to non-lethally restrain someone that's resisting or trying to get away. These two scenarios broadly describe nearly every instance that a soldier would have to get into a hand-to-hand -hand fight. Either they're in a close quarters life or death battle, or they're restraining someone. So military combatives only have to focus on two main things, a warrior ethos and the ability to control a resisting opponent. One of these scenarios involves lethal force and one doesn't. However, both of them involve being offensively minded. The reality is that combatives training is mostly about mindset and aggression. Soldiers have to be able to throw themselves into action and run towards gunfire. 
The only actual skills that need to be taught are how to hold someone down. When the training manages to focus on these core skills, teaching combatives in 10 weeks starts to look reasonably possible. So if military combative systems are able to make soldiers reasonably effective in a short amount of time, why aren't they useful for civilians? Mainly because self-defense and national defense have very different requirements. This means that civilians have very different priorities and the luxury to learn a lot more. Unlike a soldier, civilians almost never want to run towards the gunfire. If you move towards a dangerous situation, you have failed step one of self-defense. While soldiers need to be offensively focused, civilians generally need to be defensively focused and avoid violent situations as much as possible. The mindset is completely different, and as a result, the tactics need to be different as well. For example, a soldier needs to be able to take down and restrain someone that doesn't want to fight. Soldiers and police officers are the only people allowed to do that. Otherwise, it's usually assault. Some of the most important tools in a soldier's arsenal are things that a civilian might never be allowed to use. In addition, civilians are also able to learn more detailed and elaborate ways to fight. The government is never going to give soldiers years and years of hand-to-hand -hand training because it would be a massive expenditure of taxpayer money for a negligible increase in combat effectiveness. Frankly, no government would ever approve it and senior officers would never ask them to. However, a civilian going to lessons on their own dime is able to amass skills over years or even decades because it's their money and they can do what they want. You are not restricted to learning martial arts in a 10-week course, which means you don't have to limit yourself to the bare essentials. Military combatives work because soldiers only have to train for very specific scenarios that require relatively few skills. You and I, on the other hand, have no idea what we're going to need to defend ourselves because we're always going to be responding to someone else's attack. That means we need a much broader skill set than military martial arts are able to provide. We also need a higher level of skill because most of us don't walk around with automatic rifles, body armor, grenades, and a platoon. Soldiers have a lot of options to use before resorting to punches. You and I don't. This means that we have to know much more about hand-to-hand, -hand, which we're able to do because we finance our own training. Admittedly, there are some people that have gathered decently broad skill sets from combatives training, but it's usually people that have managed to accumulate the training over many, many years. And those people are very much the exception. In an MMA gym, I would be considered an amateur. In a military combatives program, I would be considered very advanced. I've heard active duty military talk about advanced moves that I've seen taught at hour-long seminars for beginners. Becoming an instructor in McMap takes just over 150 hours of training, which is a laughably small amount by any other standard. Now, just because military martial arts are terrible for civilians, that doesn't stop people from trying to sell it. Instructors have an easy time selling military martial arts as reality-based self-defense because it seems like a shortcut to being able to fight. But that's only because they're giving you a very limited skill set that you might not even legally be able to use. It seems like a fast, easy answer, but there are no shortcuts to fighting. Anyone that says different is selling something. Israeli military, the IDF, are using it. Why? Because it works. Weirdly, the same people that say that MMA is a sport and sports aren't self-defense often take things like Krav Maga, which also isn't self-defense. The military doesn't care about self-defense any more than you care about being able to win a war. Military martial arts are designed to suit the needs of soldiers within strict limitations. They prioritize mindsets and moves that are not at all conducive to civilian self-defense. Any military martial art that works really well for civilians was designed poorly. If you're not in the military, military combatives won't help you. Thanks for watching the video. By the way, I have a Twitter now. You can find me at, at @armchairviolence without the e. I ran out of characters. My Twitter's a place where you can find my very bland takes on MMA fights, but it's a great place if you want to ask me questions. So have at it.